everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Democracy 3. Democracy 3 is currently in a pre-beta build, despite what it says in the top right corner where it says this is beta. This is pre-beta, uh, developed by Positech Games, who you may know for, well, obviously, Democracy 2, uh, or also Gratuitous Space Battles and Gratuitous Tank Battles. So, uh, the developer of those also working on Democracy 3. So, what is Democracy 3? It is a strategy political simulation where you have the opportunity to essentially play as the supreme leader of real world countries in real world states or as close to approximations of real world states as uh, the developers have deemed possible so this is not a game where you know it's not like tropico you're not ruling over a fictional nation um you know this is not europa universalis or crusader kings you're not the king of some middle ages kingdom or duchy you are ruling over, you know, present day. Well, let's just hit new game here. You can see you're ruling over present day United Kingdom or France or Germany, United States, Canada, or Australia in the current build. I'm not sure if there's plans to add more countries, uh, but this probably covers a lot of uh, the people that are watching this video between these six countries. Uh, so every country has its own kind of unique characteristics, its own unique strengths and weaknesses, and uh, there's some CIA World Factbook style uh, analytics and demographics that you can see here that kind of demonstrate what each, what each country is all about. So you can compare, you know, life expectancy, size, population, etc, etc. Um, I've played a few games, or at least a, an hour or so as Canada, and also spent a little bit of time as the United States. I'm going to play as Canada for the purpose of this video for a couple of reasons. One, I'm from there, so I don't know if that actually gives me a unique advantage over playing as one of the other countries. Uh, but the other one is, since Canada is substantially smaller than a country like the United States, which has, you know, roughly ten times the population and a lot more, you know, GDP to deal with and a lot more policies to institute. Canada's much smaller. It almost feels like it's kind of like a starting country that you can play as and, and things are a lot more demonstrable. So if you make a change, you can pretty quickly see the effect that it has as opposed to the United States, which is like, you know, trying to turn around an enormous battleship or something like that. Canada's kind of like a, it's a tiny schooner or something like that. So you can, every change that you make, however minute, you can usually see a result from it. So we're going to play uh, as Canada here. And I want to point out maple syrup consumption, 0 0.26 kilograms per person per year. That's not that much. I don't understand where the stereotype comes from. I don't even like pancakes. Okay, so we're going to play and we can name our party. Uh, there's several ones that are already in here. Why don't we name ourselves uh, True Dockers and well, the opposition party can be, I don't know, True Dingle Dongs. Now, uh, this is actually important here. Uh, what you, these kind of checkboxes you have at the start. I'm gonna play with a three year term length. What this effectively means is that you have less turns until an election. So the way that the game works is every turn represents a quarter, which is three months. So if you have a, a four year term length, that's four times four, 16 quarters, 16 turns. Same five would be 20. Three is only going to be 12. So I'm gonna do this. Uh, it might make the game a little bit more difficult because I have to get po uh, popular opinion higher sooner, but it's also gonna make the video move a little bit faster because sometimes this can be a slow moving game. It's definitely uh, a game where it's probably in your best interest to be methodical. Uh, we can also change things like, you know, we can get rid of natural disasters here. I, I'm, I'm sure there's probably more of these planned to be in the game. We can adjust our difficulty, innate socialism and liberalism and political apathy. I haven't touched these at all yet. Canada is indeed a monarchy, even though this game kind of treats it a little bit more rigid than I believe the current Canadian monarchy setup is, where basically the Queen is just a symbolic figurehead. I guess it's the same as the United Kingdom. Anyway, uh, you can also turn on compulsory voting if you want. And, um, you can have a term limit. Uh, we'll go with no limit, but it doesn't really matter. In, in Canada, it's actually four years with a two-term limit, I think. Although it might be no limit in Canada. I really should know this, but anyway. Uh, let's play. So, uh, I think I know more about American politics than Canadian politics, perhaps a little sadly. So, when I, I need to prepare you here, because when I click off of the screen, you are gonna see a number of icons and buttons, and you are gonna be like, well, what the fuck is going on here? It's actually really easy and intuitive, uh, but you're gonna need to trust me on this one. You're gonna need to lay yourself down in my hands and let me carry you through uh, what might be a brief period of unfamiliarity. So we're the new prime minister. Uh, the lives of all 33 million people are now in your hands. Uh, there's a number of situations, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and this is kind of like a political sandbox. So you could have a goal that you set, basically. There's no end game, there's no score. Uh, your goal could just get be to get reelected. Your goal could be to turn Canada from a relatively liberal state into like a relatively conservative state or something like that. So, you know, the world is essentially your oyster. Obviously, some of those goals are going to be harder than others, but that's part of the fun. So let's say begin term of office. Okay, so you're looking at this and you're saying, Jesus Christ, what have I gotten myself into? 
The interface here is actually not only simpler than it looks, it's actually relatively ingenious. It's a really clever way of showing uh, how multiple kind of situations and factors feed into one another to create effects that affect a nation. But let's start uh, very simply here. Top left, this is our political capital. This is what we spend to uh, institute policies. So if we want to add like a tax on alcohol, for example, that might cost us six political capital. We generate political capital every single turn and we spend it every single turn as well. This is our income. This is our expenditure. Obviously, the difference between uh, income and expenditure represents our surplus or our deficit. Right now, we are working on a $1.02 billion per quarter quarter deficit not really that bad when you play as the United States it's like a trillion dollars per quarter deficit that is gonna be difficult to manage this uh, clock represents the time towards our next election so every uh, turn it will move one twelfth of the way closer uh, and before we click on any of these tabs up here let's explain what the fuck's going on in the middle so uh, these bars here represent Groups of the population, so, you know, people who identify as socialists, people who identify as farmers, people who are environmentalists, middle income, wealthy, etc., etc., uh, and how they feel about us. So right now, state employees, government employees, I guess, the retired socialists and farmers really like us. Capitalists, religious, wealthy, environmentalists, middle income people hate us, and then everyone else is kind of in the middle. And our overall popularity is here at the bottom. Uh, not really that good. 31% right now. So obviously we want to get that probably... Uh, into 50% or higher by the end of our term. It says here a value below 50% indicates failure and the end of your game. Good to know. Now, uh, you might be wondering what's up with all these icons here. This is where things get very interesting. Each one of these kind of uh, sections here represents part of your nation. So this is like our welfare tab up, up here in the top right. Every one of these icons here has to do with our welfare. For example, if we click on this money sign, this is poverty. So we can see uh, how poverty has changed over time. It's been relatively consistent. We can also see uh, things like state housing and, you know, we can adjust sliders on that. The white orbs, I believe, are policies. So state housing is like, you know, the government pays for housing. Um, and we can adjust sliders on those to change things like uh, poverty, alcohol consumption, smoking, etc., etc. The red orbs represent problems, but one second. You also have an economy tab, a tax tab, policing tab, or sorry, this is public services tab. Uh, what is, this is law and order, so this is like your police tab, and transport as well, and finally, uh, foreign policy up in the top. So, let's take a look at one of these red uh, orbs. So why not this one right here? This is alcohol abuse. So all of these red orbs represent problems. If we see green ones, those represent competitive advantages over other countries. So, we have a serious problem with people consuming alcohol in large quantities. This is obviously bad for their health, but it's also leading to crime and disorder in our cities. So we can see what causes alcohol abuse. Poverty, which is higher than we want it to be, even though this is what's a little bit confusing is that sometimes, uh, you know, you see green and you tend to think that that's automatically good, but this just means it's above zero. So our alcohol consumption is probably a little bit too high. Uh, our unemployment is a little bit too high. Our poverty is a little bit too high. And our police force is maybe not strong enough to deal with it right now. So we can see the causes of alcohol abuse that leads it to being higher than it should be, and also the effects. So it increases crime, it lowers overall nation health, and it costs us extra for the state health service because we do have... Uh, public health care in Canada. So, uh, another way to represent that visually, and this is what I think is really ingenious, is if you hover over, like, the alcohol abuse button here, uh, please work any second now. There we go. Uh, you can see from all across the kind of spectrum that we have here, what is feeding into al alcohol abuse? So we see poverty, alcohol consumption, and unemployment are feeding into alcohol abuse, and it's giving more crime and lowering health. I, th I think it's a really good way to demonstrate kind of what's going on. For example, this is pollution. If we hover over the pollution orb, we can see uh, the environment is bad, and that's feeding into pollution to increase it. Green means increasing. This is making environmentalists dislike us more, and it's also lowering the health of the nation. Anyway, let's go back to alcohol abuse. So we have some political capital. Let's try to lower alcohol consumption in the country. So we'll click on alcohol consumption. And you can see we have, a, like, very, very low alcohol tax right now. So why don't we vastly increase this alcohol tax? You can see every one of these policies will have a political cost associated with it, or a cost in political capital. To lower it by any degree will cost us four. To cancel alcohol tax will cost us eight. And to raise it will cost us eight. We're going to raise it all the way to 75%. And we can see what this will do uh, to voters' opinions and also to other various effects or causes in our nation. So the poor are really going to dislike us for this. Poverty is going to increase a lot because people are going to be spending more money on uh, alcohol, so they'll have less, you know, income to spend on things like their bills. Uh, it's going to lower the equality in our country because I guess the rich can afford to buy alcohol and the poor can't. And uh, it's drastically going to lower alcohol consumption, which is what I want here. So we're going to apply this change. Whether this is positive or negative remains to be seen. 
Uh, we still have 18 political capital. So why don't we take a look at the top here? And if we click on this uh, light bulb, we can institute policy. So these uh, represent policy ideas in a variety of kind of spectrums. What was the main problem with our country? Was it not... Um, I don't know what this gun... Oh, that's intelligence briefing. We probably won't talk about that because it's not that relevant as Canada. Um, I think we had problems with... Uh, well, why don't we just come back here and see? So there's like homelessness is an issue. Uh, rail, strike, alcohol consumption. There's, oh, this is a big one. Asthma epidemic. So asthma is uh, in both Canada and the United States when you start the game is an epidemic. So we want to lower our uh, asthma epidemic to uh, cause productivity to increase and parents' opinions of us to increase as well. So let's try to cure asthma, essentially. So what we're going to do is go to the environment and, you know, this will also make environmentalists like us more. And why don't we go with something like clean energy subsidies and we'll just crank this all the way up to maximum. We'll solve our money problems later. We can raise tax to like 80% in Canada and they won't care because they're used to it. Or should I say, we're used to it anyway. We'll apply changes here. So we have maximum uh, input there. Or sorry, yeah, maximum uh, tax on the environment. Uh, we'll also go... Let's go back to our uh, pollution issue here. And we'll crank up the environment. So micro-generation grants. These grants are given to citizens to help subsidize the cost of energy. Micro-generation systems such as solar panels and wind turbines. Sure, let's, let's crank up some more grants there. Uh, hopefully this will affect our economy as well. And let's institute some policies that will give us more money. Because as of right now, I've been spending but not really earning. So let's uh, crank up... A luxury goods tax to like 90%. The wealthy are going to hate us. But that's okay. Their votes are worth exactly the same as the not wealthy. And, uh, well, this is, I clicked on the wrong thing again. We'll talk about these tabs on a future turn. I kind of just want to get things going here. Uh, we're very low on political capital. What else can we implement? Uh, sure, let's implement a telecommunicating initiative, which means essentially work from home. Uh, so that you uh, have less people in their cars, which will improve our environmental situation. Okay, so we're out of political capital. Our turn is over. Let's finally, at 12 minutes in, hit the next button, and we'll finish our first turn. So that represents the movement of one quarter, essentially. One twelfth of our term. So every time you uh, finish a quarter, you get uh, a screen like this, which kind of demonstrates what's happening in your country. So we can see, you know, health is still pretty bad, education's good, poverty's increasing, despite this green arrow, that is a terrible thing. Uh, everything else relatively neutral, so we should probably focus on improving the health of our nation over the next 11 turns. Now, uh, we can also, so I'm going to ignore this debt protection law first. We can see our budget report, we have a small surplus of $3.69 as Canada, that's actually fairly, it's enough to allow us to implement another fairly significant policy shall we say. It's small compared to overall government spending, but still pretty uh, useful. It's a policy or two that we can crank up. Good news, the global economy is doing well, and this is having a positive effect on our GDP. Good, we have 55% of the vote in an election, estimated, uh, and our cabinet is trustworthy and their effectiveness is passable. We'll talk about our cabinet later. Occasionally, we'll also get these, which are essentially FTL, almost, style uh, decisions that you can make. So they're, they're usually binary, and it'll say something like debt, debt collection agencies have been in the news because of the methods they are using, sometimes quite aggressive, to extract payment from people who owe large sums of money. These debt collection agencies provide credit to people whom larger, more respectable companies will not lend money. A law is proposed to limit the ways in which such agencies can operate. So we can either limit the uh, agency activity for these collection agencies and maybe make sure that they're only using reputable and legal methods to extract payment, or allow them to operate freely. I am going to uh, limit agency activity, and this will cause some effects uh, to our voters that are not, I guess, totally visible easily. So now that we've done one turn, uh, we can see how people feel about us. So parents are improving their opinion of us, uh, probably because of the way we're handling the asthma epidemic. The wealthy are becoming pretty pissed off. The poor are becoming pretty pissed off, and the middle income are still pissed off. Commuters are also more pleased. So let's improve the health of our nation, and why don't we also try to raise uh, the opinion of the poor? Well, that's what we'll focus on this time. So we'll go to our policy menu, uh, and we want to improve our health. So why don't, for public services, let's do some cheap things uh, that, are, that will make people like us more. By the way, you can also see uh, estimated popularity with voters on each of these uh, things, or each of these uh, policies that you can institute. Obviously, something like uh, instituting a policy for free eye tests. Uh, and, you know, even if we crank that slider all the way up, it doesn't really cost us that much money. Only $306 million per quarter. Um... People are going to like this. Why wouldn't they? And we can see how this will affect people. This is just a very simple and cheap way to make people like you a little bit more. So we'll also maybe um, do free school meals, which is also pretty cheap. And will probably improve parents' opinions of us. Uh, you know, I, I should have said this at the top, but inevitably this video is going to start some kind of political discussion. And, you know, YouTube gaming videos are not the time and the place for political discussion. I'd encourage you just to take what I'm doing at face value and then realize that this is a video game I'm playing. I'm not trying to say that the whole world should work like this. I am not a politician or a political scientist or even really that interested in politics. 
this is just the way that I'm playing the game. And you can totally play in a way that is divergent from your own viewpoint as well. You could be totally liberal and play as a fascist if you wanted to. But in any case, um, let's also crank up a plastic bag tax. Environmentalists will like us more, capitalists will like us less. Uh, and we only have six political capital left. Why don't we also institute uh, pollution controls and we'll crank them all the way up again. This is to improve environmentalists. It'll also improve uh, the health of the nation, which will hopefully uh, allow that slider to go up. And as all those sliders go up, then people like us more and more. Okay, poverty is going down. Uh, everything else is constant. We have a $5 billion surplus. That's good. We have 61% of the vote in the election. We really turned that around pretty quickly. And there's a royal scandal. A prominent member of the royal family has unfortunately made a comment that could be considered racist if taken out of context. The government was overheard by press photographers and is causing, or the comment was overheard by press photographers and is causing a scandal. Should we support the monarch or criticize him? We'll uh, criticize the monarch. I think we're taking a very liberal bent uh, to our government here, and it seems to be working out very nicely for us so far. So, uh, none of these issues have been solved yet. You know, policies take a while to institute. But we have a $5 billion uh, surplus. Why don't we try to institute something that will help our economy? So something like a space program, which could cost us up to $5 billion a quarter. It will create a lot of jobs. It will lower unemployment. It will. It, our religious membership is going to like us a little bit less. Uh, but unemployment's going to go down. State employees is going to go up. Technology is going to go up. Uh, and Patriot's going to go up as well. So we'll, we'll crank a lot of money into this, which is going to be expensive, but that's okay. And why don't we do one more policy, and then in the next, uh, after the next turn, we'll, we'll add in rent, rent controls to make people like us a little bit more. Poor earners, anyway. Uh, good, good, good. And we will end our turn here. And then I'll talk about ministers, because there's a whole uh, other side of the game that I haven't talked about at all yet. So, 63% uh, of the vote. GDP is going down, which is bad, but crime and poverty are also going down. Uh... Religious condemnation, the head of a church has called upon you to resign and told the followers not to vote for you. Uh, could be a big loss, I don't know. And we also have a new situation, uh, an unfortunate one, brain drain, which essentially means that, you know, we're educating people, and then because of our high income tax and luxury good tax, uh, they're going to other countries to uh, get uh, employment. So essentially, we're paying into a system but not getting the rewards of having all these educated people. So what we might want to do quickly is just go to luxury goods tax, for example. Crank this down just a little bit lower our brain drain hopefully it'll also uh how much does that lower our income by like a billion dollars a quarter kind of substantial uh that's okay though all right so let's continue now uh we do also have ministers so if i go to this menu right here you can see all of our ministers and our ministers uh the main value of them is that they uh give us political capital every single turn so you can see like our law and order minister william kim is giving us a substantial amount of political capital every single turn um other ones of our ministers are kind of being a little bit lame duck-like. So, you know, we have, uh, who is this? Maya Lemieux. Her political capital per turn is only 2.3. Not that good, right? Uh, but what's worth noting is that if we fire her, watch how the political capital of uh, these other guys changes. See? It all lowered by, like, maybe 10%. Uh, and... And maybe it changes from person to person, but this is because it lowers uh, their loyalty to you because they kind of consider you to be not necessarily gainful and consistent employment. So you've got to, like, weigh the positives and negatives in your head. Like, oh, this minister sucks, but if I fire them, then all ministers will briefly lose uh, effectiveness. But let's hire another uh, foreign policy minister who will generate a ton of political capital, like this lady here. And hopefully this compensates for the amount that we lost from these other people. Anyway... Uh, okay, we have 23 political capital. We need more money. Why don't we open up this money tab? And you can see a pretty nice uh, visual representation of where all of our expenses are. For example, healthcare is huge. Pensions, schools, debt, interest, military spending, state housing. Uh, and then our income. So income tax is obviously where most of our money is coming in. Uh, it's going to cost us 25 political capital to raise our income tax. Unfortunately, we only have 23 political capital so we just can't do it which I guess is like a representation of you know if you don't have uh, a lot of the people in the parliament on your side you can't necessarily uh, do these sweeping measures so this is gonna cost us 22 points but I'm gonna raise sales tax instead to hopefully uh, I mean people are obviously gonna be very displeased with us but we need more money to be able to institute more policy so that's gonna end this turn I suppose so we're about a third of the way towards re-election and I realize that it might be considered that the video is dragging on just a little bit because we are uh, you know, it's a slow game. It takes a while to get going. Uh, we're appointing a senior judge. We want to appoint a strong supporter of human rights or harsh sentences that she feels should be applied to thieves, muggers, and shoplifters. Let's go with uh, pro-consumer, not afraid to challenge large corporations. I think it's pretty clear where uh, my leader's political affiliations lie. So, 
GDP is going down, unemployment's up, crime's down, health is up, poverty's up. We should probably try to lower poverty and unemployment. And one way that we can do this, if I go to uh, new policy, I'm just going to speed up a little bit probably, is by increasing uh, the... Which, what was I going to say here? We can increase uh, unemployment benefits. So if I go to like homelessness, for example, unemployment benefits, we can change from low to medium, which is not going to cost us too much, but we don't really have that high of a... Uh, surplus either you know we only have like a billion and a half or something like that which is not really a lot uh, when it comes to doing some uh, important things so why don't we also uh, add in a junk food tax which people will hate us for but it'll improve the health of the nation and give us a little bit more money and we can also add in um, let me think about this hybrid cars initiative 97% popularity with voters sure this will make people more pleased with us and uh, we'll go to our next turn so again I'm gonna speed through things probably a little quickly uh, our credit rating has been downgraded that's pretty bad but 71% of people are gonna vote for us that's pretty good health is up unemployment's up poverty's not changing which is positive for us because it was going up recently um, our credit rating is really bad we should really try to improve our GDP uh, health is up, crime's down, though. So let, let's look at our GDP. How do we fix our GDP? It has gone way down, essentially, since we took over. Um, one way to do this might be to uh, increase our productivity. So productivity looks pretty low. What can make productivity go higher? Better education, yeah. Um, lowering, ah, getting rid of brain drain seems like the best, but that'll require us to lower taxes. We could be kind of dickish and... Um, with something like maternity leave, we can just change from full pay to half pay, and then that'll improve uh, it slightly. Um, we'll also go back to our GDP here and see... Um, hmm. I don't want to... The problem is I don't really want to invest in anything uh, because we don't necessarily have the money. What about uncompetitive economy? What if we lower slightly our corporation tax? This will make uh, people a little bit more pleased with us if they own a big business, and hopefully this will allow us to get our credit rating up a little bit. Uh, is there anything else I could maybe do here? Tourism I could increase by uh, decreasing violent crime. Yeah, that seems smart. Uh, how should we decrease violent crime? Uh, maybe by investing more in education with uh, public libraries? I don't know. Um, that's gonna cost us a lot of money. We'll, we'll go to high on libraries, though. Uh, and we only have five political capital left, so why don't we institute another policy? We kind of need more money at this point. Uh, so we'll go to a tax, and, uh, that's a subsidy. That's not a tax. Um, we'll add in fuel efficiency standards. That doesn't cost us very much money and makes environmentalists pleased. Okay. So, we'll click to return to government. Unemployment is way up! What happened there? Oh my god, okay. Um, everything else is okay. Health is good. I like that. Um, but we really need to lower unemployment. And the, I think the reason unemployment is so high is because uh, we have an uncompetitive economy. So uh, what if we r drastically lower corporation tax down to like 1%? That's, oh, that's going to cost us like $5 billion. Okay, down to 9% or 8%. Uh, and we'll also, uh, we really should not increase income tax in this situation. We could though. Um... What if we increase income tax? Oh, uh, we can't though. Uh, revert changes. Don't accidentally hit cancel policy. If you cancel income tax, you're going to find yourself in a bad spot. So I'm just going to skip through a couple of turns here just to get to the election, essentially. Pollution situation is at an end, so we've done very good things for our environment. We have 69% of the vote in the election. That's the most important number, of course. Um, let's continue moving onwards here. I am going to raise... Oh my god, we have like a $40 billion deficit. I am going to drastically raise income tax... Government borrowing is huge. People are going to hate us, but we're going to go to like 65% income tax in the hopes that this will allow us to come out of this deficit. Otherwise, that might cause people to hate us now. 60, we only lost 7% of the vote for raising income tax by like double, basically. Freedom of Information, Proposed Freedom Act. Um, what's our surplus at like now? Still really bad. Uh, so we might even have to raise income tax again. I should have just raised it more the first time. Let's raise it to 90% and see how people feel about us then. We have basically become a completely socialist nation. Um, 49%? That's still pretty good. Immigration scandal, okay. Our credit rating is worryingly just CCC. In only three years, I've managed to ruin uh, the GDP of Canada completely, and we're still running at a deficit here, which is ridiculous. Anyway, let's just speed through to the election. Uh, curb banking bonuses, yes, restrict bonuses. We're getting 51% of the vote. Let's see if we get re-elected, because essentially, you know, you, you get the idea, I think, that you can sit here and min-max and, and make decisions. You've created a truly green and pleasant land free from the horrors of pollution. Beautiful. 
We in the planet thank you. Uh, we're getting 60% of the vote despite 90% income tax. Maybe not necessarily realistic. Oh, we have something that we have to go on. Prevent oil drilling. And then I think we have our election next turn. Yes, okay. So let's see if our election turns out. But anyway, hopefully you understand my point, which was essentially that, um, you know, you can sit here and play the strategic game and definitely make very thoughtful, well-reasoned decisions. Uh, but I don't want to do that and end up with an hour-long video necessarily. So instead, we ended up getting an election here. Maybe not totally realistic with 90% uh, income tax. But then again, I did completely eradicate pollution from the entire country. So we can begin our next term. Uh, that is probably going to do it for my Let's Look At of Democracy 3. This game definitely hits a, a soft spot for me. You know, I played political strategy games like The Political Machine for much longer than I should have. And this is a, a deeper simulation. Although I still feel like to a certain extent it's kind of superficial. Like you can manipulate popular opinion easily even if the country's going down in flames. Now that might be realistic if you want to be incredibly cynical, uh, but I think with some tweaks, Democracy 3 could definitely be a game that I would spend a lot of time with. Again, this is a very, very early build pre-beta. Uh, there will be links to the social media pages for Positech Games and the website for Positech Games. I'm not sure if there's a pre-order page or anything like that, but you know, keep Democracy 3 on your radar if you're into the these kind of strategy games like I am. If you're a fan of the Political Machine 2012 or Democracy 2, then uh, definitely this is something that I feel could be straight up your alley. So, as always, links in the video description below to relevant social media and uh, website pages. If there is a pre-order page, definitely check that out if you're interested. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.